Hey, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes and untold TV stories you probably wouldn't have known from the people who live them. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not take a moment and do it now? Today, Rue McClanahan reveals why her real-life dad did not like Blanche, how Blanche's style led to Rue starting a clothing line, and her hectic QVC career, plus whatever happened to Blanche's wardrobe. I also asked Rue, how would Blanche and Vivian have gotten along? What would Blanche be doing today? And Rose and Sophia, for that matter. Here is Rue McClanahan. What kind of audience's reactions did you get to Blanche? All positive, except my father. My father said to me once on the phone about the show he had just seen. I said, how'd you like the show, Bill? Well, he said, I thought you got a little close to the wire. <laughs> because, you know, he didn't want to see me playing a slut. <laughs> but the audience, oh, the reactions of the audience, of course, were full of joy, gratitude. Got so many letters from women saying, thank you. Thank you for letting me be as young as I feel I am and not have to go by this chronology. Thank you for letting me dress uh, colorfully and youthfully again. Uh, and a lot of people begged me to start a clothing line along the style of Blanche's stuff, so I did. I started one called A Touch of Rue. And, um, no, rue is a little herb. It's a little, little bitty herb. So there was a little herb drawn on the tag in the back, a touch of rue. And I, I designed uh, inexpensive replicas, or, or, or not copies, but outfits that were similar to what Blanche wore in silk, because uh, whew, I was being put into beautiful outfits. But you know, it was a big hit. Everybody loved it. It was over QVC. But there was a buyer at QVC who didn't want me to do any lingerie. And I said, good grief. That's what Blanche, Blanche's name stands for. Gorgeous lingerie, her peignoirs and her gowns. And, uh, so she said, all right, you can do two. You can have two out of 20 on our show. So we picked out two, and we put them on the show, and they sold like hotcakes. <laughs> so as soon as the show was over, we also had things to wear to your daughter's graduation, to a bar mitzvah, to a wedding, uh, to on the cruise, uh, to work, sports, relaxation at home, you know. And uh, after the show, after we'd done that, then Darlene calls the buyer. She says, mm, well, I've decided that I want you to do only lingerie. I said, Darlene, that's as bad as doing no lingerie because people want to be able to go out and look like Blanche. So I've got to have a variety. And we just had a hard time seeing eye to eye for four years until I finally said, I've had it. I surrender. You can sell the clothes. She also didn't like glamorous clothes. She said, that's not my audience. I said, I'm bringing you a new audience, Darlene. You've been selling to Sears Roebuck people. I'm, I'm bringing you a new audience. She just never got it. Besides, you know what? That takes too much time. Clothing line. Wow. <laughs> I didn't realize that uh, Blanche had such so much uh, merchandising associated with it. You know, some people get dolls, some people get lunchboxes. Oh, we never called it Blanche. You couldn't do that. Right. That's Fairboten, uh-uh. It. it was all Rue, but it was similar to what Blanche wore. I couldn't really uh, put out a Blanche line, you know. I mean, a, a line that looked like what I wore because uh, a lot of it was too complicated, for one thing. That, that gal, oh, what a talent, and I know her name as well as mine, but right now it slipped my mind, the one who designed all the clothes. Oh, she was the best. 
just the best. Oh. And she put me, I, I, you know, I got it in my contract to keep all of Blanche's clothes. Really? That's a nice perk. Yeah, I need a nice apartment to put them in. <laughs> I need a whole apartment. Because what I did was I took maybe a fifth of them. It took two pickups full. Because I wore five outfits on each show, and we did 22 to 26 show a year for seven years, shows a year for seven years, and then we did Golden Palace, and I got all those too. So I went that day to, to look at them in the warehouse where they were kept hanging up high on hangers, and I thought, good heavens. I had a 3,000... 5,000. I had a 5,000 square foot house in Encino. I didn't have room for all those clothes. So I just took the best ones I could see, you know, that I could spot, and I hung them everywhere. I had walk in closets and they were full, and I had, they were hanging on doors. They were hanging everywhere. So uh, now when I watch Golden Girls, my husband teases me about this because what I see is an outfit I didn't get that I really like. Darn, I didn't get that. <laughs> and it's still in style. Some of them aren't. You know what I did? I took all, I took all the shoulder pads out of all the Blanche costumes because they went out of style, you know, a few years ago. Took them all out. Well, I had over 200 something, I don't know, shoulder pads. So I put them in a great big garbage bag and I gave them to my sister <laughs> as a Christmas present. Two garbage bags it took. <laughs> so guess what I got back the next Christmas? Uh, two, two garbage bags back? What? I got a comforter made out of shoulder pads. She had sat down on the floor. She had, her husband took pictures of her doing this. And she had designed this lumpy, colorful, hilarious uh, coverlet out of all those shoulder pads. My sister has a sense of humor. So you have that comforter today? You bet I have it. It was only about three years ago that this happened. So funny. Oh, it's so ugly. <laughs> Where do you keep it? I have it folded up on a on a like a hamper at the top of a hamper in my in my bedroom. Oh my god. Can I get a picture of that at some point? Oh sure. Because if I keep talking about it, I'm gonna have to show it. Oh, it's so funny. That's so funny. awful. It's got a big flowery thing made out of shoulder pads in the middle of it. And the colors are just bleh. <laughs> <laughs> I have an interesting question for you. What? How do you think Vivian and Blanche would have gotten along? I think Vivian would probably have been mesmerized by Blanche. And I think Blanche would probably have been intrigued to teach Vivian what, you know, to help her develop, maybe. I think they would have gotten along great because... They were both gentle. Um, in fact, Vivian was timid. Um, they were non-confrontational. Um, I can't see any reason they wouldn't have really liked each other. Had very little in common, except they were both sexy. You know, Vivian was the one that was after the sex, not her husband. She was always trying to draw him out. So. I think they had that in common. Blanche, Blanche had uh, had a lot of intent for all her, for lack of a better word, for all her sluttiness. She had a real strong degree of integrity as as, as an individual, didn't she? Blanche was insecure about men, but she was yes, full of integrity. And she didn't see anything wrong with sex. She just didn't see anything wrong with sex. She just never felt that way about it, even from early girlhood. So 
there was no guilt or any kind of, you know, sleaziness involved with her. She just loved men. But it, the reason she loved men so much is because she didn't get the love from Big Daddy that she needed. She she craved his attention and his love, and she never got enough. And so she was always... Well, she had that happy marriage with George. But then after that, she was either always trying to replace George or uh, ha find a substitute for Big Daddy. And, of course, nobody worthwhile ever came along. But she was also shallow in her reasons for choosing certain partners. You know, one fellow came back from the service and he was in his, I think he was in army uniform, and oh, he was, she thought he was pretty spiffy. And uh, he's out of the service now and he's going back to his job as a pharmacist. So when she sees him in his pharmacy white coat at the drugstore, she decides she's not interested anymore. You know, looks, looks. What do you think uh, Blanche is doing today? I think Blanche found the man of her dreams. And I think Rose found the man of her dreams. <laughs> and I think Sophia probably hooked up with that Japanese gardener and they sold the hotel. Next time, the final part of my interview with Rue McClanahan, she tells us how they made the transition from Golden Girls to Golden Palace, how she liked living in New Jersey, she compares New York to Los Angeles, and how she got her name. Till then, why not get your name on the show by becoming a Patreon subscriber? Every subscriber will be name-checked on at least one Pop Goes the Culture episode. It's a great way to let people think you're famous and keep us on the air. I'm David Levin. I'll see you next time.